Hi, this is Sean with Blocktown Tools. I'm going to do a comparison of the primary competitor's clamp. Everybody's pretty much in the British Masonry seen these now. They've been at all the block competitions. He's given them away by the dozens, maybe by the hundreds. And then a lot of people have seen my clamps. I call them state puts. The design's a little bit different. I got washers on the side. I don't use pop rivets. I use the bolts. I don't have the big wide square aluminum angle. I have a welded in smaller angle. I might bite down a little farther on the wall. But those are, those are differences cosmetically, but the important difference is how do they perform? So I want to take a look. So I want to do a, what I nickname a pull test or a tug test. We'll put the clamp on the block. Put the line through just like they show in the video. Cinch it onto the washer. There you go. Okay. Let's give it a spare and square. Do it the same way they show in their videos. And I'm going to over here and mimic a guy on the other end of the wall, giving this clamp a good tug. Stay on there. Tick. Try it again. Let's see. On there. Okay, so if you're pulling the line straight down the wall, not too bad, pull it all the way over to the web. Let's see what happens. Let's see the guy down the wall pulls up a little bit. See the line's up a little bit, that's about mimicking maybe one course higher, maybe 20 or 30 feet down the wall. Right in the knee. So that came right off. And, uh, On this end of the block, yeah, it's different. So, getting down here, I'm about six feet away. I'm getting on the wall, getting ready to pull the raise the line on the other end, give it a good pull. Yeah, tips. So, it tips most of the time, occasionally it comes off. It seems like if you pull, especially if a guy pulls up at all, it's going to come sailing down the wall and hit who knows who. So here I am again, if you look at the line, you see the line's up some, right off. Okay, so, so that's that. Just some people that might be acceptable to a lot of people. I would worry about it a little bit coming off the wall. You don't know what the guy's gonna do. The other bricklayer's gonna be down the wall. So here's, here's my clamp with my design. These clamps are a little stronger. Probably about close to 30% stronger. So feed it through, wrap it on the side washer, not a top mounted washer, side washer. Wrap it all the way down, put it in the line. Okay. I'm gonna give it a, about five feet over, give it a tug. Not much. It was perfectly level, so I'm pulling it. Look, watch the line. Still there, tipped a little bit. Try that, do that again. Get it straight. Yeah. The clamp's not hardly budging. Let's see what happens if we pull it up, like I mimicked with the other one. Pull it up, but the guy raising the line is about a course up. So see the line's up now, up kind of high. Line just broke. So a real hard tug. The line, which is 90 pound line, something like that, just broke. Let's try it again. Feed it through. Tie it on. Give it a tug. The line just broke. So the clamp's not flying off. You pull real hard. You might break a line, but you're not, you're not gonna end up with a, a clamp flying through the air. I'll try it again.
So that's it. Here's the stay put clamp. Line off. And here's the competitor's clamp. They don't want me to say their name. We all know who they are. So the differences you see right here. Stay puts bite down farther. If you go to one of my other videos, you can see where I show that the spring is significantly bigger and stronger. The spring that goes around the pin here in the middle of the clamp. So this spring, when I, I bought a dynamometer, which is a hand grip tester, this spring, it's about 33 pounds of pressure to compress this all the way down. 33 is the max I got on it. This one on the dynamometer, it's like 44.6 was the lowest I got on it. So 33 versus 44, you can guess which one's gonna stay in the block longer. So, and there's something I just noticed. This clamp is, is brand new. I've had it for a couple weeks. I've done a few tests with it, but I haven't used it in the field. But if you look close, see that? You can see it. It's real close right there. See that the clamp is already coming loose from the angle, and the washer is coming loose. So this has hardly been used at all, and it's already, it's already beginning to fail. See it wiggling? It's just... It's frustrating, you know, because I actually wish that they did have a good design. Somebody that can produce these clamps by the thousands, if they would produce good high quality clamps, it'd be good for all of us, but they don't. I do, I don't produce them by the thousands. If I get enough orders, I guess I could, but I produce them by the dozens, maybe by the hundreds in another year or so. I'll produce enough to get you one or two. But these are safer, they're stronger, they're not gonna come flying off the wall, and they're a little bit cheaper. So there's a couple other videos showing the comparisons, but you can see here, this is a problem. I mean, I, honestly, if they don't want to admit it, then they're not, to me, they're not being honest. So you can decide for yourself. If you've had one of these, you've been disappointed, don't give up on clamps. Give me up, check me out on my Facebook page or go to my YouTube page or my Etsy store where you can buy them. It's blockdowntools.etsy.com. You can order these clamps. I also make a couple of line stretchers that work good for split face block. This is all this is coming from a result of, I've been working in the field for 30 years. I'm a foreman on a masonry crew now. I've been working in Arizona for 26 years. These are these have been popular, these type of clamps have been fairly popular here in Arizona pretty much almost the whole time I've been here. 15 or 20 years we've had these type of guys using clamps that, that they've welded on little pieces of steel and bolted on pieces of steel to and bolted on washers to tie the lines to. So what I, what this guy did is he saw that, from my understanding and from my conversations with him, he saw that. He went back to, I think he's from Arkansas, and he come up with his own design so he could mass produce these and, and make some money off them. But he's not a block layer. His brother is a block layer. If I understand, I may be wrong, but that's my understanding. So he doesn't quite understand the problems with this. He doesn't, and I've talked to him about it early on, years, a couple of years ago, and he didn't agree that that was an issue. Well, you can see it, it's an issue. It's obviously an issue. And this space right here is just a rookie mistake. If you are if you were using a clamp in the field for a week, you'd realize it's better to get to use that space. They have this clamp lower so it doesn't get bumped as easy, and they have more bite on the block. Also having the line come from the side, closer to the center, it's gonna cause less tipping on the clamp. You saw when I pulled these ones, there's a little bit of tipping, you know, but not much. This one, when the line's pulling from over here, you got pressure coming across from the side it's coming through its point and it wants to make that thing tip. It wants to make it tip. And it's also putting pressure on this square and this washer, pulling them together. If the line's coming this way, if the line's coming through here, like this, comes here like this and going on the washer, it's putting pressure on this angle that way. And it's putting pressure on this washer that way. That's, but that's what's causing those rivets, pop rivets to loosen up. If this guy's trying to use this all day, imagine, I've only had this line tied on here less than a dozen times. It's already loose. Now, and if you go the other way, we'll have it come through there and around. You got this washer being pulled the opposite way and this angle being pulled the other way. So the combination of pulling it this way and that way and this way and that way, it's gonna get so loose. And what I've heard, and I've been people have written me, customers, saying that the washer's coming completely off. I've talked to guys at a company called Stone Cold Masonry down here that had got a whole bunch of them. The boss bought a whole bunch of them for them. Most of them said they just threw them in the garbage because it was the rivets were failing. He said they weren't. They were breaking. They were failing. They weren't working. He couldn't pull the line tight. They were too too weak, and they were just really disappointed. So I sold them these. 
guess how many complaints I've had since I sold them a bunch of my clamps about, this was probably four or five months ago, and zero. Zero complaints, zero requests for replacement, zero requests for repairs. These are tough, they're heavy duty. I've made them better and better and better. I, can, I think I might have another video, I got some pictures on my site showing the evolution of these. From clamps that I bought at Home Depot, the clamps that I bought at Harbor Freight, the clamps I ordered from Japan, the clamps I ordered from here in the United States, and I ended up with these Irwin clamps. Irwin makes a couple different versions of these six inch spring clamps. There's a version that's fairly weak that's about as strong as these, maybe a little bit stronger. And then there's the version that's real strong. These are these are too strong. Women and children aren't gonna be able to use these. These are these take some pressure to squeeze. 44, 45 pounds. So they're staying on. So I, I worked my way up to the strongest thing. If there's a stronger clamp out there, guess what's gonna happen with these clamps? I'm switching to those. I keep looking. I haven't found any stronger clamps than these. They're strong. And by the fact that the spring's stronger, they've had to make the whole clamp. The steel and the clamp body is thicker, thicker and heavier. The pin going through that holds the spring is thicker and heavier. If you look at the pin on the side here, you see that the shaft is just bigger. Having this popper rivet on here, pulling on that, it's just poor. So how could you make this stronger? You put a bolt and a nut through here, which is what most of the guys have done with their older, with the clamps before these were supposedly invented. Bolt and nut, that's kind of a pain. Putting, screwing it, putting a bolt, putting the lock nut inside here. It's hard to mass produce something when you have to stick a tiny little wrench in there and tighten the nut. What we can do is I did here, I run the bolt through the handle side to side. I put star washers in there. He's got a washer in here, but you can't see it from there, but it's, it's just a just a plain old washer, which makes your line want to spin more, spin right off if you, if you only wrap around once. You gotta wrap around two or three times. The star washer more bites on your line. So I ran a bolt through the washer, star washers, all the way through the handle with a nut, and then I welded it. So no matter what you do, this nut this washer is never going to come prying off of here and cause your line to go flying or cause, God forbid, a washer and a, and a popper to go flying down the line where somebody's working. This one, that washer's going to get pulled off of there. Who knows if it flips through here, pinches somebody's, who knows? It's dangerous. And I can show you the emails I've gotten from people saying that what they're happening is they're letting Andy know that they're failing and he's sending them replacement washers and pop rivets, stronger ones. In my opinion, if you're going to send stronger ones to fix it, you should be building with stronger ones in the first place. These are aluminum wash pop rivets. They should be at least steel and twice as long as he's got them in there. But that's his business. You know, he's, he's wildly successful, supposedly, so he's going to keep doing it the way he wants to do it. But if you just want clamps for you to work on your job to make you successful, I suggest you go with these ones. I make them for us. We're block layers. Buy a block layer. I'm a union block layer. In the local here in Arizona, you can check with Jim Cahill. He knows me. We're good friends. So if you want something made by a union guy, you want something made in America, and you want something made to the best quality possible, that's what I've done. These, not so much. Thanks for watching. Any comments below, I'll, I'll try to respond to them. You know, if, if you got a comment or a question, if you got a suggestion for an improvement, by all means, suggest it. If there's a way to improve these, I'll do it. If you've bought some of these already, and there's something you think could still be better, I'd really love to hear from you. That's my video. Thanks for watching.